The land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. Its leader is a true citizen of the world. He believes, without a deep understanding of the past, there is no future. Each journey is focused on a detailed study of history and culture. Pilgrim of the 21st century, Zapari Skakov, with a team of scientists, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Trails of Nomads scientific expedition has arrived in Israel, on the ancient full of secrets land of Kudus. What mark did the Kipchak Mamluks leave on the holy lands associated with the name of the Prophet David? To whom did An Nasir ad Din Muhammad ibn Kalawun give the room where Jesus Christ met with the Twelve Apostles? What act of Umar ibn al Khattab saved the Temple of the Holy Sepulchre? How did this act affect the Kipchak Sultans? Members of the Trails of Nomads scientific expedition explored the streets of ancient Jerusalem. Previously, they got acquainted with the historical monuments of the Muslim quarter. Now the attention of scientists is focused on the sites of the Christian, Jewish and Armenian regions. Among them are many monuments dating back to the Mamluk period. There are holy places of the prophets. Islam dinning qorqaqchilari deb atalgan bizning babalarimiz ol gözinde Islam dinini gana qorqagan joq. Our ancestors who were called defenders of the Muslim religion actually patronized not only Islam, they also had great respect for other religions. Thanks to this attitude, the temples, the graves of the prophets Isa, David, Sulaiman and Musa have survived to this day. Shirkevleri bari de o suvatqa shein durus saqtalib keldi. At the bottom of this complex, located on Mount Zion, is the tomb of the Prophet David. One of the four books sent down to earth by the Almighty, Book Zabur, was given to Saint David. His name is mentioned and exalted in the Quran 16 times. Prophet Muhammad set David as an example for his followers. The Jews considered David to be the second ruler of the people of Israel after Saul. Now the grave of the Prophet has become a place of worship for the Jews. We came to the grave of the Prophet David mentioned in the Quran. Right behind me is the place where the Prophet rests. You see a niche behind it. It is opposite to the temple located on the mountain. A lot of tourists come here. Among them are Muslims, Jews and Christians. Therefore, we came to worship him. Not all historians agree that this is indeed the grave of the Prophet David. At what time the foundation of this structure was laid is also unknown. But the existence of the Mihrab indicates that the last construction work was carried out here after the period of the Crusaders, that is, in the era of Muslims. Climbing to the level above the tomb, you find yourself in the place depicted in the painting of Leonardo da Vinci, The Last Supper. Here, Jesus Christ met his apostles for the last time and gave him his instructions. But according to the current appearance, it is clear that there was a mosque here. There is another peculiarity of this place after the arrival of the Mamluks during the reign of Sultan An Nasir ad Din Muhammad ibn Kalawun. At the request of the Kingdom of Naples, this room was given to Catholics. But then, in the era of the Ottoman Empire, the temple again became Muslim. Uh, uh, 
The Last Supper could have been held here, archaeologists say. The facility was built as a church in the 12th century. It was later turned into a mosque. However, since 1948, that is, since the beginning of the Arab-Israeli conflict, this place has been under the jurisdiction of the Israeli government. Entry is now allowed for all religions. Now, this is a tourist center. Behind me is the mihrab and a stained glass window. Further, there are inscriptions in Arabic, excerpts from the Quran. Therefore, for us Muslims, the first floor is considered sacred because the Prophet David is buried here. And the second floor is also sacred to us because there was a Muslim mosque here. If you follow from the complex on Mount Zion and walk towards the Jaffa Gate in Old Jerusalem, there is another place associated with the Prophet David. People call this place the Tower of David. In fact, it is a large fortress consisting of architectural and archaeological sites. We can say this is a small town. Jerusalem in the 11th century BC was called the city of the Prophet David. After him, his son, the Prophet Suleiman, ruled here. We are in the palace of the Prophet David and his tower. It is behind me. It is now a large museum. Everything here is for tourists. Most of the structures in the fortress of the Prophet David date back to the beginning of the 10th century BC. Then comes the 2nd century BC than the time of the Byzantines, the period of the Crusaders, and from the 13th century, the era of our ancestors who came from Deshti Kipchak began. Egypt, Syria, Israel, Palestine, these places were all under their rule. This lasted from 1250 to 1512. <laughs> The fortress of the Prophet David has undergone more than one transformation in the flow of history. Depending on the principles followed by the ruling elite, the buildings in it were destroyed or, on the contrary, restored. The current appearance of the fortress is the merit of the Mamluks and Ottomans. The structures that were here before were completely destroyed during the confrontation between Salah ad-Din Ayyub and the Crusaders. After these wars, the reconstruction was undertaken by the son of Kalawan, An Nasr Muhammad, as the researchers found found out a significant part of the restoration work was carried out during the reign of the Kipchak sultans. Everything here is connected with our ancestors. For example, this old tower to my left, it was built by our ancestors, the Kipchak Mamluks. The structure dates back to 13th-14th century. The upper part of the tower collapsed, but the lower part has survived. In addition to the tower, a dome and a mosque were also built during the Mamluk period. They date back to the 14th century. And this is another tower. It was erected during the Ottoman Empire. According to some researchers, there are no other construction projects erected under the leadership of the Turks here anymore, because the current appearance of the fortress of the Prophet David is the same as it was during the reign of the Mamluks. However, the alternation of black and white stones characteristic of Mamluk architecture is imperceptible. The famous archaeologist Katya Citrin Silverman explains the secrets of this. The Mamluks in different regions carried out construction in different ways, that is, they took into account local conditions and traditions. Also, building materials from facilities destroyed during the wars were used in the construction. Therefore, the architectural structures erected during the Mamluk period in Cairo, Damascus and Israel are not similar to each other. Information on Mamluk architecture can be found in the Jerusalem History Museum. It is located in the fortress of the Prophet David. This cultural institution, which has been operating since 1989, contains artifacts from different historical periods, from the Canaan period to the New Millennium. The Mamluk period holds a special place in the museum. The whole story is presented here in the form of layouts, holograms and drawings.
Bizim babalarımız ol gözünde ülkün kurduğu cümstür cümstara atkarkan kamalda sakta paluşun. Our ancestors at that time did a great and difficult job to preserve the fortress. They were engaged in reconstruction, restoration of the former walls. Now the fortress has become one of the tourist centers. The museum has all the information about the works that our ancestors did. It is important to study every corner of the fortress. You get real pleasure from this. <laughs> Many scholars believe that the fortress of the Prophet David is a synthesis of several civilizations. From here you can see Kudus from a bird's eye view. An extraordinary view appears from one of the three towers erected during the reign of King Herod of Judea. All parts of the city are visible from the Tower of Fazael, which was also restored at different periods. A 360-degree panorama opens. An architectural monument, a golden domed structure, Qubat al-Sahra, protects the sacred rock from which the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. Nearby is the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third shrine in Islam after Al-Haram in Mecca and Al-Quba in Medina. A crescent moon shines on the dome of the mosque. If you look to the right of it, you can see the complex, the burial place of Saint David. And if you look to the left, you will notice two nearby domes. This is the Temple of the Holy Sepulchre. It is a five-minute walk from the fortress of the Prophet David. The next stop of the expedition is the place where, according to Christian beliefs, Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, buried and resurrected. However, the scientists visited first of all not the church but the Omar ibn al-Khattab Mosque opposite. Its doors are closed to tourists. Only believers can enter here to perform namaz. In 636, Caliph Omar arrived in Jerusalem. Then the city was called Kudus. The first temple he visited was the burial of the Prophet Isa. However, he did not go inside and read namaz near the temple. He said, if I go there, then this place will have to become a mosque. Therefore, he did not do this and read the prayer outside. This event took place in 637. The Muslim army led by Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jara conquered Jerusalem. However, Patriarch Sophronius wanted to surrender the city only to the Caliph and refused to do it to others. And then Omar ibn al-Hattab himself set foot on the Holy Land and received the keys to the city. After the ceremony, Patriarch Sophronius invited the ruler to pray together, but Omar ibn al-Hattab, as a sign of respect for Christians, did not enter the church. He prayed near the temple, that is, where the mosque is now. It was on the site that a mosque with a 15-meter quadrangular tower was built during the Mamluk period. <laughs> This mosque was built in the 15th century on the site where Caliph Omar performed namaz. This particular mosque is located behind me. Now it works. It has been operating for 600 years. We went inside and read a prayer. When fair Caliph Omar ibn al-Hattab set foot on Jerusalem land, he first of all hurried to get to the Al-Aqsa Mosque to read the welcome prayer. Then he found the holy rock, from where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. It turned out that this place was then littered with garbage. On the instructions of the Caliph, it was cleared and fenced. Then a structure was built there that differed from others. The Caliphs who came after him also continued to the construction of Kubat al shahra During the reign of the fifth Caliph, Abd al-Malik ibn Mu one, the current shape of structure appeared, and during the reign of Caliph al-Mamun from the Abbasid dynasty, the building was fully decorated. But Muslim rulers looked respectfully at representatives of other religions. This policy was continued during the reign of the Kipchak Sultans.
The main goal of the Kipchak Mamluks, especially Sultan Beyboris, was to oust the Crusaders from the Rus region. But at the same time, the Mamluks did not interfere with the local population in the preaching of their religions. They propagated their religion, Islam, exclusively by constructing mosques and madrasas. Moreover, if necessary, they defended the interests of other confessions. Followers of the Christian religion believe that the Prophet Isa was buried in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Muslims believe that he did not die and that his soul and body ascended to heaven. And yet the Kipchak Mamluks, who were considered the defenders of Islam, ensured the safety of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This policy was continued by the Muslim rulers. In 1757, Sultan Osman III issued a decree stating that any change concerning this holy place should be made only with the consent of the Christian denomination. This rule is valid to this day. In 2016, Franciscan ministers of the Catholic Church, along with representatives of Greek Orthodoxy and the American Apostolic Church, uncovered a marble stone at the site that was considered the tomb of the Prophet Isa. However, no human remains were found in the sarcophagus. This is evidenced by information sources. It is interesting that the temple of the Prophet Isa is locked and the keys are kept by the caretaker of the mosque of Caliph Omar. This is a tradition that originated in the 15th century and is followed to this day. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre was built in 335 during the reign of the mother of the Roman ruler Constantine, Helena. Since then, there have been strife among various Christian movements and societies. Therefore, the mission of protecting the temple was entrusted to Muslim families. For example, the Jude dynasty was in charge of the keys and the Nusebe were in charge of opening and closing the gates. <laughs> Currently, the Temple of the Holy Sepulchre of the Prophet Isa is a tourist attraction and anyone who wants can visit it. And we went there. There is the burial place of the Prophet and the place of his death, Golgotha. There is a stone on which he was washed and prepared for burial. There are many other holy places. Members of a scientific expedition exploring the areas of Jerusalem discovered a lot of valuable information about the Dashta Kipchak Mamluks. They visited the building of the Tankizia Madrasa, where the police station is now located. Scientists also visited such madrasas as Al Malikia, Al Farizia, Al Ashrafia. There are plans to visit the Ribat al Mansuri built in 1282 by Al Mansur Kalawan. There are many historical monuments full of secrets in the city of Kudus. Jerusalem is divided into a new city and the old city. The old city is located inside the fortress. The old city is divided into three parts, Muslim, Christian, Jewish quarters. Many buildings constructed during the period of our ancestors, the Kipchak Mamluks, are located in the old city in the Muslim quarter. We especially visited this place and got acquainted with them. There are more than 90 such buildings there. Of course, we just won't have time to visit all of them. Therefore, we visited the most important ones, collected information about them and recorded interviews with old-timers. In the 7th century, the name of Jerusalem was changed. The city was renamed to Kudus, so it was called until 1099, when Crusaders captured the city. Later, the Kipchak Sultans came to power and returned the name Kudus to the city. Expedition team found numerous interesting facts. All these findings require thorough research by Kazakhstan's historians. The next stop of the Trails of Nomads expedition members is Palestine. The cities of Jericho and Bethlehem are also considered sacred. <laughs>